20 seconds and counting. Hey, what's good, yo? Welcome back to another video. It's Nisha. I'm joined with Drew. And today we're going to be discussing Texans free agents uh, that we should resign um, in the upcoming offseason. And we're going to be specifically talking about the ones that we signed this past offseason, those one year, um, one year, two year deals that we signed guys to. So let's first start off with Kamugu Hill, who is absolutely making a name for himself this season. And he's been showing out. I mean, last game we talked about in a post game, but he had a near pick six and made um, so many tackles, 12 combined tackles. Um, and he's just been all over with the tackles for losses um, this game. And like, I think he's one of the higher rated like linebackers this season, um, like among like all linebackers or something like that. So I think Camu Hill is definitely someone who we need to resign. But what are your thoughts on Camu? Camu is one of my favorite players, just to even watch in the Texans defense. He flies around the field, and this isn't even playing the natural mic position, middle guy in the linebacker group. He plays an outside linebacker kind of role in this 4-3 defense, and he had a heck of a game versus the Titans. Like you said, he had 12 tackles, interception, and on the season, he has 61 tackles, two forced fumbles, and a sack. He's been doing absolutely fantastic. He's able to get off the block pretty well. He's very physical once he engages with the box. And if he, when he's able to push on the offensive lineman, push him back into the backfield, he really lets our defensive line get to work. He never quits. And honestly, I would be so happy the Texans would be able to re sign him here. David Coley did say, I think today, either today or yesterday, that he was the Tyrod Taylor of the defense, meaning that he's a veteran presence, he's consistent, he's a leader. Is really fitting in here with the Texans. So if we were able to re-sign him, that'd be huge for this defense and just continue to build off of that. Yeah, and it's crazy that at the beginning of the season, we thought he wasn't going to be anything more than like special teams, but now he's like an integral part of our defense. Like um, it's hard to imagine how our defense would be without him. And so, um, so yeah, he's definitely a must re-sign for sure. Okay, so the next player we're going to be talking about is Malik Collins. And um, this year, uh, according to PFF, and I know um, everyone has mixed opinions on PFF, but we like to talk about PFF whenever it praises our players, and it, and PFF loves Malik Collins this year, in which they grade his pass rush, pass rush 77.6, which is eighth among interior linemen, and so that's absolutely incredible, and if you compare that to uh, like last year, uh, December 1st, 2020, he was ranked the lowest graded defensive tackle in the NFL by PFF. So that shows the insane amount of progress Malik Collins has made, um, really shows you how scheme plays a role. Maybe Lovey Smith might be an interior lineman whisperer. So I don't know what the case may be specifically. There probably are all these uh, several factors involved, but Malik Collins absolutely been uh, amazing for us this season. What are your thoughts on him? Yeah, Malik Collins is a guy who's really taking advantage of his opportunities. Coming in from the offseason, I did think that he would be the starter. He was the most proven guy out of all the defensive linemen, interior linemen that we did sign. And he had a couple good runs at the Raiders and Cowboys, but his pass rushing skills have just been amazing this season. He brings in a little bit of a spin move, actually, from the interior. Um, he's basically about a three-tech. He's a spin move. He takes advantage of his one-on-one -on -one opportunities in the pass rush. And he's done really good. He isn't like a liability in the run game, but he's done a good job. I've had absolutely no problems with Malik Collins so far. I love the way that he's pretty fast too for a defensive tackle, which is really special and exactly what we need in a 4-3 defensive line where you can't necessarily have a nose tackle. You need to have aggressive defensive tackles that are able to rush the passer. And, of course, be able to stop gaps in the run game, which he has done. And I'll be really happy if we could re-sign Malik Collins. I have absolutely no problems with him so far. And I think he's going to continue to have another great end of the season. He's had a great past three to four games, like you said. PFF rating been going up. I don't know if that means anything to anybody. But he's been doing really good. And expect, to, expect him to emerge a little bit more. Get a couple more sacks. And you'll see how good he is. And I hope that we re-sign him. 
And speaking of like the defensive line, Roy Lopez has been receiving a fair share amount of double teams. And so, I mean, if that allows Malik Collins to get one-on-one -on -one, um, against uh, offense, uh, opposing players, so that could be partly the reason uh, due to Malik Collins' success, but hey, it's a duo, it's a tandem. So they're both working together to generate as much pressure as they can on the, on the quarterback. And so they're doing a great job in that regard. And so, and yeah, another can another um, player we have to sign is Malik Collins. So Camu, Malik, and the third player we're going to be talking about is Desmond King, and he broke out um, last uh, yesterday, I guess, um, against the Tennessee Titans, where he had two interceptions. And um, since the Indianapolis Colts game, he's been playing like a hundred percent of the defensive snaps. So that really shows like the trust that we put in him to be at his position and he did tweet like um earlier that he tweeted i love it here that could either mean um he wants to stay in houston or he loves the position that he's at um he's not playing at the slot corner position that we thought he was going to be but he's more playing on the outside but seeing the last game obviously small sample size but seems to be like finally adjusting to that role but what are your thoughts on king yeah, so there was two guys that was really, really excited and impressed the Texans were even able to sign. And that was Philip Lindsay and Desmond King. Desmond King was a pro bowler. Now, he wasn't a pro bowler for outside corner, but he was a pro bowl nickel corner when he played for the Chargers. He was fantastic. He was also able to play a little bit of free safety. But now, he has moved to outside corner and he had a two interception game. I believe that's his first in his career. He, he's been increasing the snaps he's gotten per game. He started the season as our nickel corner, who we didn't really use because we were playing mostly 4-3. But now he's been making plays. He's physical. He's aggressive. He's got great ball skills. As you know, he's also a punt returner. A really good, he was also a really good special teamer when he's given the opportunity. But now he's a full-time starter playing outside corner. He's one of my favorite players. I can't believe that we even had him on this team. I was so excited because I knew how much, I knew how great of a player that he was. So Desmond King is emerging and now he's going to be comfortable in this position. He could be the future outside corner of the Texans for the next three to four years at least. He is that talented and the Texans must re-sign him. He is a core piece of this defense and he will continue to get better as he adjusts to this position as you saw last week. Versus the Titans, he's only going to continue to get better. Yeah, and that pretty much wraps up the video. Um, hopefully, we covered all of the guys that we should resign. Um, let us know if we did miss a player um, to resign. And yeah, l let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Thank you all for watching. Peace.